this when working with experts. Okay. So um, I'm going to, um, just going to give my a small and little bit of myself. Uh, I'm a web developer. Uh, I switch communications. I work online. Uh, first learned about Python in 2013 on university.com. Thanks, Dave. Okay, the guy who introduced me. That's good. Um, other experience that I have is also that I have more than five years as a system administrator, and I recently decided to um, to change my career uh, into a full-time developer. Okay. So I'm going to talk about um, my own personal journey and experience as I made the transition from being uh, a systems guy into a, a developer, okay? A journey which I believe many of us have had or are still contemplating on embarking on or have already started on, okay? So, um, at Siege Communications, we use uh, uh, tools like Django and Angular, amongst other, a host of other frameworks, some of which I have never heard of until recently. And um, again, it was a, it's quite an experience that I've been having, uh, which, is, which has not been without challenges and uh, fears, which I'm about to share with you, okay? So the first one that I want to talk about is um, the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome. How many of us have heard about the imposter syndrome? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And how many of us have actually experienced that? <laughs> the imposter syndrome? Good. Great. It means I'm not alone, is it? <laughs> I had to get that off my chest. Okay. So the imposter syndrome is um, feeling that you're a cheat or a fraud and that one day, soon, your peers will find out that you don't belong in their circle. <laughs> Say so I said you are a noob working with the pros. Okay, um, you've been doing some, uh, you know, coding of some sort. Like I said, I, I was introduced to Python by uh, by Dave Evans on Udacity, and I think the first project that I did was um, a search engine of some sort. It wasn't pretty. I mean, we built a search engine um, uh, in the social whatever network uh, thing again on on Udacity. So, um, you know, and then you make that big leap uh, where the big boys play. You make that big move uh, to where it all happens. I mean, I became a developer at a company where, I mean, serious stuff goes on, okay? Where people are serious about stuff. They make real stuff, not uh, <laughs> play things. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I asked myself the question, am I good enough? Am I good enough? Will I make the, I mean, will I be able to make the cut? Okay. So, even as I was sitting down there and, 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 and Mr. G there was going on and on and, and he was very articulate and eloquent, I was thinking to myself, wow, that G guy is good. <laughs> that Mr. Ninda guy is good. Will I be able to do the same? So, um, I'm trying to say imposter syndrome is quite common. And, um, it is common again in professions where the work is peer reviewed. Where the work is peer reviewed and writing software is such, um, it's just one, I mean, just one of those fields where your work has got to be reviewed by, uh, by a peer. I, I like it when, when Mike they said he's, um, he's a maintainer, is it? Fine, said he's a project maintainer and he gets to do a lot of that stuff, you know, review card, yeah? It gets to review card. So, um, particularly in open source software, someone can just look at your, at your code that you've written and, and they can just change it and make it better. Um, it, 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 it means that your code particularly was not that good or it, you might have missed something. Okay, so we're going to look at how we can deal with the imposter syndrome. Okay.
the first thing that I realized um, whilst I was trying to deal with this issue was um, stop comparing yourselves to super devs, okay, or super developers or genius developers. Stop comparing yourselves to um, you could emulate, uh, you could aspire to be like someone, but stop comparing yourselves to them. And why is that? Because the minute you dwell um, on, on your heroes, or the minute you begin to dwell on these geniuses, you might end up feeling inferior to them. And at the end of the day, you might in inhibit your own progress. You might inhibit your own progress, your own development, because you're saying, wow, that guy is there, yeah? That guy can call some serious one-liners. You know, there are programmers like that who, who can uh, just conjure a one-liner and you'll be like, wow! <laughs> to think I had to write 15 lines of code and someone can just come and say, oh, fine, you could, do, you could use a one-liner. It's good to have super days amongst us, okay? But I'm just trying to say, stop comparing yourselves to them, okay? Kill off the notion of the 10x engineer, uh, or the 10 times better engineer, okay? Kill off that notion. Um, the, the 10x engineer is, is a concept of, uh, which, say, just say, which says that uh, some engineers or some coders or some developers are just 10 times better than others. I mean, it's a fact. There are some people who are really good, like I just said. But still, I need you to understand that they might have gotten their one next at what? At a time. They work their way to the top. They work their way to the top. Great developers become that way because of what? Experience. The minute you begin to put, I mean, some holy grail of development, I mean, you, you make them a god of programming or something, you think uh, maybe it's because it's deity or something that is that good, but you need to tell yourself, I too can code, okay? I too can code. I too can do this. I too can do this. Uh, not today, not tomorrow, but eventually I'll, what? I'll get there. That's the spirit that you need to foster within yourself as you, as you move on. So, uh, like I said, you need to foster what is called a growth mindset. And um, much, research, much research has went into uh, what is known as the growth mindset, what has come to, to be known as the growth mindset uh, by a certain Carol Dweck. Um, she says, in one world, effort is a bad thing. If, like failure means you're not smart or talented, if you were, you wouldn't need effort. In the other world, effort, effort is what makes you smart or talented. So the growth mindset is simply a matter of opinion. It's a matter of perception. It's a matter of how you want to perceive things. Okay? Let's say you're trying to, to, to build something and you're just starting off and you're working with these guys who really know their stuff. And um, you make your first uh, commit or what and you make some serious, um, you make some serious uh, bug, I mean you create some serious bugs or you, you do something seriously wrong. But you made an, uh, some effort. Uh, what, what you need to do is to view your effort. You need to view your effort as a, as a step towards making you better. You know, there are some people who think, ah, if I was good at this, probably I wouldn't, I mean, it would have come naturally to me. I mean, how many can testify? I'm, I'm, that, I'm just good at development. I'm just good at, uh, I, I did that when I was trying to learn how to drive. I've always had this, um, you know, negative attitude towards driving. I always thought, ah, well, I'll just hire a drive or something. And, and eventually I had to learn how to drive. I left it late because I did, it was one area that I, I didn't really want to go, get into. I just had this fear. But well, when I began to make efforts to do that, to, to try and get into driving, I began to make efforts. I understand that though it may not come natural to me, but my effort eventually will get me there, okay? Some people have this notion that if, I'm, if, I, if it's meant to be, then it has, it has to show, right? 
If it's meant to be, it has to show. If I'm good at coding, it has to show. If I'm good at designing, it has to show. If I'm good at something, it has to show. But it's not always the case, okay? So, um, we need to, to move towards a fixed mind. We need to move away, rather, that's a typo. You need to move away from a fixed mindset which assumes that our character, intelligence, and crea creative ability are static givens which we can't change in any meaningful way to a growth mindset which thrives on challenge and sees failure, not as evidence of unintelligence, but as a heartening springboard for growth and for stretching our existing abilities. Dweck and uh, her colleagues put in a lot of work uh, researching about uh, the, the fixed mindset and growth mindset and what have you. And they found out that um, people with a fixed mindset, they believe that their ability to do something is inherent. Uh, they were just born that way. You know, the people who think that oh, I was just born that way, you was born a musician, you was born an actor, or they were born for that. That's a fixed mindset. But re research has been going on on brain plasticity, uh, which, which means that the brain isn't fixed. The brain isn't fixed, the mind shouldn't either. Okay, our brain isn't what? It's not fixed. It's not fixed. I mean, the minute we were born, we were born knowing literally nothing. We were driven by instincts, uh, looking for, for uh, milk or whatever. It was instinct. But eventually we learn as we go on. So the brain isn't fixed. It's, it's, uh, it is an element of plasticity that it means it can be um, extended. It can grow. So your mind shouldn't be fixed either. So th th those are some of the things that helped me as I was uh, making my baby steps uh, as a developer, trying to fight all these fears that I'm not good enough or are dealing with this imposter syndrome. The other thing that, um, that we need also, that I, I learned or realized was that making mistakes doesn't make you a phony. Okay? Making mistakes doesn't make you a fake. It doesn't make you a fake. It happens to the best of us, right? It happens to the best of us. I'm sure Mike can testify to that. I mean, even the best of us can make some serious mistakes for that matter. <laughs> so, um, David Walsh, a programmer, who felt that as a developer for Mozilla, he shouldn't make any mistakes, wrote this on his blog, and I caught. As that is a Mozilla level developer, a Mozilla level developer. You see the, the kind of mindset? A Mozilla level developer. And I was thinking to myself, what? As a siege communications developer, I mean, the place where it all happens. I'm not supposed to be making uh, all these silly mistakes. Uh, it must mean that I'm not good enough, yeah? It must mean that I'm a phony. It must mean that I'm a fake and I'm sitting on a time bomb which, which is going to go off <laughs> on some time, I mean, any time, all right? So he says, every most level of the year, I should never ever submit a pull request with so much as a console log, a console log statement. And you know what that led to? More mistakes, more self pressure, and more feelings that. I was an absolute fraud waiting to be thrown to Mountain View and burned at the stake, yeah? Wow, the guy was serious. <laughs> so the less he thought of himself and the harder he tried, the more he would make the most obvious of what? Of mistakes. As I was starting out, I used to get angry at myself when I, uh, when I would get PEP8 uh, violations on, on Jenkins. You know, after all the hard work and stuff, and you make a commit, and Jenkins does his thing, and you see um, zero of one passed, uh, you, you had some violations. And I was like, what? I mean, after all this time, I'm supposed to be now, you know, uh, Pepe should be within me. You know, I've, I read the Zeno Python, uh, and, 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 you know, you'd think that by this time I should be at least good enough. But you're not. You still make some Pepe violations here and there. But making mistakes, it doesn't make us a phony, okay? It doesn't make us a phony. All right. Um, another thing that I realized is, as, as I was 
also progressing in my own journey was that I met her, okay? You met her. The fact that you are amongst the experts doesn't make you of lesser value, okay? You might be limited in your contribution at that particular moment, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot do anything of worth, okay? So new programmers, what? Meta, all right. So you need to focus on providing what? Value. If you are a noob and you're working with, with experts, just try to do the little things. Try to do the little things. Add as much value as you can. One step at a time, okay? You know, what I used to do was, um, was, was uh, every morning before we start, you look at the, the issues on, on Bitbucket. Uh, sometimes you get to pick your own issues, which is good because you kind of avoid the difficult ones. But sometimes you get issues assigned to you and you have no choice. Okay, but what I, what I realized was my contribution matters. However small it is, however maybe uh, less significant it might be, but it still matters that I'm adding value. And it helped me to defeat the imposter syndrome. Okay. So, important syndrome can happen when you're primarily focused on yourself. We've talked much about that. Then there's also um, the fear of the unknown. That's one fear that I discovered that it was stopping me from making real progress. I said I had um, a background in system administration, right? Uh, talk of networks, setting up servers, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was more comfortable doing that. You know, give me a router, I could configure and do some, all that kind of stuff. I was comfortable with that. But when I decided to make that switch, one thing that really uh, was also inhibiting me was, what could happen? What could happen? What if I'm asked to use a new technology? Will I be good enough? Will I be good enough? You know, you've, you've put in, like, said, I, 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 ghost, I started uh, Python in 2013, and, and you're putting some hours, yeah? You're putting some hours, you've done some tutorials, you've tutorials point, uh, course toot, and all those other good tutorials I've covered them, and you feel like you're ready. But you start to think, what if they ask me to use a different um, framework? You've, you've done Django, and they say, okay, fine, we're moving to Flask or, or, or to some other. So but one thing that I, I, I realized was technology is always what? It's always changing. And it's changing at a terrific pace that almost all of us are going to have to learn a new technology at some point. And we always fear, um, there's always that feeling that, will I be good at this? Will I be good at this? But the expert in anything was once a beginner. The expert, every expert in anything was at some point a beginner. There was at some point a beginner. So you shouldn't, um, be afraid to step out, okay? Don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, personally, I didn't consider myself much of a front-end person. When I started, uh, I always looked for reasons not to, uh, to do, you know, or to learn front-end frameworks. But when I got to see, the first thing that I was told was, no one here does your front-end. You have to do your own front-end. I was like, wow, this time I have heard it. I'm done in. Okay, <laughs> so certainly so, yeah, I had to learn things like Angular uh, and material design and all these other frameworks, but guess what? I came through, okay. Um, so the other thing that I also realized that could inhibit uh, or that could, that we are afraid of as, as a new is also we are afraid of asking. And uh, the Dunning-Kroger effect is the direct opposite of the imposter syndrome. Uh, there are people, uh, the Dunning-Kroger effect is a cognitive bias in which lower ability individuals suffer from illusory superiority, mistakenly assessing their ability is much higher than it really is. Uh -huh. So you think, um, I mean, I'm too good to be asking such a silly question, right? 
you, you're straight out of from uni and uh, you graduated with, uh, you know, best student, you got a books award, um, whatever. And, and you're thinking, I a person of my stature, you should be asking uh, you know, such a, a silly question or what. That's the, the dunning Kruger effect. And then it has a, uh, it has a funny background to it. Uh, how, it, how it started, you know, uh, the study was inspired uh, by, uh, by a certain MacArthur guy. You know what this guy did? He, he went and robbed a, a bank two times, whilst he uh, put on some lemon juice on his face, because lemon juice is used as an invisible ink. <laughs> and then this guy thought uh, he was not going to be, I mean, detected on the surveillance camera. So he was, he was uh, mistakenly assessing um, his uh, ability, you see, or the ability of the lemon juice as an invisible ink. So it's, it's important as a, as a new boy, someone who's beginning, someone who's starting out, that you don't overreach yourself, right? Learn, be humble, learn, okay? So Daniel and Kruger attributed this bias to a metacognitive inability of those of low ability to recognize their ineptitude and evaluate their ability accurately. Okay, that's quite a mouthful, is it? Simply says, you don't know, but you don't want to appear stupid. And best your bubble. Yeah? Most of us walk around with that kind of bubble, right? <laughs> All right. So, um, but one thing that I realized is I was also progressing as it's okay not to what to know things it's okay not to know things you can't know everything okay no one knows everything no one knows what nothing no one knows everything and no one knows nothing uh, there are too many things you, which you can't learn in college there are also too many things that are specific to a company or a specific project Okay, so the best way to do with it is what? Ask. The best way to do with it is ask. Rather than waste hours solving a problem that another developer may have helped you solve within seconds, it's better to get someone to walk you through. You waste a lot of many hours, uh, you know, stuck in your own little world trying to solve your own problem, but at the end of the day, you could have simply asked, uh, one other thing that I also learned was that you need to learn to ask the questions the right way. I th I'm not going to do much on this one because um, uh, um, Michael also touched on some of those things. So don't just ask when he was talking about filing bugs. Don't ask questions, just to ask them. Learn to ask the right questions the right way. And also always consult the what? The official documentation first. Consult the official documentation first. I had a funny story that happened when I was learning Angular. Uh, so I had to, to, to write some custom pipes uh, to filter data. Um, I went on to Google, found myself a good tutorial, and um, went straight into coding. Funny part is, my code didn't work. But I ran the, plan the planker, it was working. I'm thinking, if I missed it. So I spent some good two hours, you know, <laughs> trying to, uh, going over my code over and over again, trying to find where the error was. But when I eventually uh, consulted the official documentation, I realized that uh, the release candidate six, which I was using then for, for Angular 2, had changed the way how pipes were imported, you see? So I, I learned that you should always try to consult the official documentation what? first. Of course, sometimes the official documentation is, is, is a nasty place to be as well because it can be really technical. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there are some documentations which were written by experts and for experts. But you gotta wrap your head around it, right? That's where the growth mindset comes in. You gotta wrap your head around it. Say, I didn't understand this thing, but I'm moving forward. You don't say, I didn't understand it, I'm not never gay, I'm not ever coming back to this uh, documentation again. All right. So do a quick Google to supplement the documentation. 
um, show that you've done some research to your question, provide extra information about your environment, etc. So when you want to ask a question, you know, at least have the cadres of doing some of these things. It will save um, you the time and those that I want to assist you. A good rule of thumb is that generic programming questions should first be researched before asking. While internal company project specific um, company or project specific questions can be asked without much googling. Okay, at least you have a leeway to, to ask more questions on specific what issues. And uh, remember that other people have their own work to do and their own deadlines. They have other things to do than spending their time helping you with every task. Okay? People are willing to help, but at least you've got to put some effort, right? You've got to put some effort. So as you are learning and you're amongst the pros, don't just expect them to spoon feed you. Just because they know and you, you want them to do your work, you, I mean, you want them to do your work, what, what about their work, right? So once you learn something, grow from it. Once you learn from something, grow from it. Don't keep on uh, repeating the same errors or, or dwell on the same level. So grow so that at least people... Uh, you, you also uh, free up, you know, their time to, to work on other things. And then there's also this one, um, the fear of doing the wrong thing. To be or not to be, that is the question. I'm late, yeah? <laughs> uh, 8, 3, scene 1, yeah. Okay. So programmers are, 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 um, are faced with many dilemmas and sometimes get caught up in the fear of making the wrong decision um, or choosing the wrong path that in the end they don't do anything at all. I've been there. You know, just been given my first major task and I'm thinking to myself, um, you know what I've heard of optimization techniques. Uh, I think now might be a good time to what? To actually implement those techniques. But wait a minute. Uh, which one should I use? Should I optimize for speed? Or should I optimize for size? You know, at the end of the day, you, you, you are stuck in this dilemma and, and you're wasting time. But in a corporate environment, time is important and you've got to move on. So one thing that I, I, I learned or realized was um, I could do one, either of the following, okay? I could do one of the following. The first thing I realized was just get started and refactor. Just get started and refactor as you go along. Sometimes we ponder on, it, on something for so long, to such an extent that at the end of the day, we, we realize that we spend much time thinking about it than actually doing it. Okay, so just get started and refactor. Okay, uh, the goal of refactoring is to pay off technical debt, which results in clean code and simple, a simple design. And the other thing also is work in a different branch and try out things. When, I, when, when, you, when you are starting out and you, you want to try something different, I mean, just work on a different what? branch. Create a different branch from the one that you're working on. Then you can go crazy and build yourself whatever. Okay? You can, you can do play around and, and do all the gymnastics in your own branch. No one, I mean, you won't break anything. So, as a new boy, someone who's beginning out, I encourage that rather than spend time, too much time pondering, why don't you create a separate branch and then you get on with it, okay? The other thing is also use visual environments, okay? Use visual environments. Um, it, it saves you a lot, okay? You can create uh, your own visual environment, have a different set of uh, Python and, and uh, Python installation, and you can play around in that branch, uh, in that virtual environment, and you won't do much harm to what to the to the working code base. Okay. Then um, the other thing is also stick to the principles. As you will be exploring and, and, and doing all this other stuff, just stick to the principles. Stick to the principles and respect the process. Okay? Uh, like at Siege, before, 
every morning you make a uh, you make a you poo okay and before you make a PR you also poo okay so stick to the principles to respect the process that is established in that organization that way you know that at least I have a benchmark I am playing within the parameters I am playing within the expected uh, parameters or boundaries right so stick to the principles whilst you uh, you're doing your own changes and lastly um, I, I streamed out a few references which you can use if you want you can get the the presentation or you can also visit any of those sites uh, refactoring guru is quite good on uh, on refactoring design patterns asking good questions on on stake overflow you know it's a good start when you want to uh, you might want to read that up how to ask a good question on stake overflow and also there is uh, the dev to wash blog which I also talked about he has uh, an excellent article that he wrote on the imposter syndrome and I'm sure you also benefit from that one. I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions? 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 Mine is not actually a question, mm -hmm. but more of a comment. Okay. So, pretty much like you, I started working last year, and I happened to be in a company that had brilliant people, and I'm sure Petrus can agree. Mm -hmm. It has like some really amazing developers. Mm -hmm. So, I went through this phase where I just thought, I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to be here, and if they hired the right person. Mm -hmm. But I think it does help if you have, like if the people are willing to help you out, because there's some people who are actually not willing to help. So I think it's a good thing that if you do know what you're doing, like if you're one of those super days, just be accommodating to the newbies, just be open, it does help, and it means a lot to them, because I got that sort of chance, and it helped me to grow. They made me believe in myself, because I just thought I was hopeless, because those people are like super brilliant. So I think, just to everyone, you will get there when you do become a super developer, just remember that you were once a newbie at some point, and you, you needed someone to help you get on your feet, so just do the same to those newbies, when you get to be a super dev. Thanks. Oh, thank you very much, eh? At least uh, she, she testifies, okay? <laughs> no, one thing uh, that, that Mike said, he said, don't be a jack, right? He said, don't be a what? A jack. You know, as a, as a code reviewer, I mean, you, you are there, and, and, and you realize this code, and it's not so good. Don't shoot them down. Don't shoot them down and say, what? What is this? You know, you know just, just try and find a way uh, to encourage them whilst also, you know, pointing them in the right direction. Um, really great stuff, Umbai. Thank you very much for that. I, it's actually nice to know, I know it's bad, but it's nice to know that you're not uh, alone in your suffering. <laughs> it, it gives comfort. I just wanted to know from um, either the both of you, how did you actually overcome the sense of not belonging or that feeling did, does it just go with time, or did you have like some coping mechanisms? Mm. Uh, personally, I think it was the point that I mentioned that you, if you focus on adding value to the organization, in due course you begin to sense, I mean to have that sense of belonging. You begin to, to really sense that I'm here to add value and I belong here. But if you continue maybe uh, in that fixed mindset and you know fighting your own battles with imposter syndrome you might not actually pull it off but for me personally it was more of when you the more value i began to add to the organization um it helped me a lot to really sense i belong here yes in my case i got help because mm. like yeah when i started out things were just tough so one of my, I actually remember having a conversation with one of my managers and they were saying, you know we interviewed you for this job, right? And the reason why we picked you was because we actually saw something in you. 
So the fact that you're selected out of a bunch of people means we saw something in you. So don't make us lose that because we chose you specifically out of a bunch of people. We picked you. So that, that says something about you. So just, you know, give it a go. And yeah, that does help. So knowing that you were selected out of a bunch of people who could have made it for this job should give you, you know, that confidence. And I think, like he said, with time, knowing that what you're doing, even if it's testing, and the feedback that you also get when someone just says, oh, that's a, good, that's a great job, you found a bug, thanks so much for that, who didn't have found it? It did help. Yeah. Any more questions or comments? Uh, it seems... Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, sure, thank you very much.